so that we can get this, um, uh, get through our agenda, get a chance for the public to uh, have its say, and then the board members to arrive, and we can be able to actually have some of our board business conducted tonight as well. So if it's all right with everybody, uh, can I begin? Yes. All right. Good evening. Good evening. It is a good evening, am I right? Yes. It is a beautiful night here in East New York, and I want to open the meeting uh, and welcome each and every one of you to tonight's meeting. My name is Andre T. Mitchell. I am the proud chairman for Community Board 5, and on behalf of our Community Board's, board's membership, our district office team in the back, our elected officials, I want to welcome each and every one of you to tonight's general member meeting. Let's clap it up. Let's see if we can do something like that. Clap it up. Yes. We are really, really proud and thankful to be holding our meeting here tonight at the Tim Community Center, where we have been honored to meet residents of this beautiful housing development and community. And they have welcomed, welcomed us into their neighborhood for a night. One of the mothers said, just don't make too much noise. Because she got to get up in the morning. <laughs> but understandable, so we want to be able to just come in respectfully. We want to be able to invite the public in from people who live in the area. We have been on tour. Our board has been on tour throughout our entire district. And so, we have been going to every single corner of our community, every single block. We have been visiting for the last almost two years every school inside the district. We have been going to mostly every community center, senior center. We have been just making our way around because in the interim of our office being renovated at 127 Pennsylvania Avenue, we took advantage of that opportunity to move around and meet the people and to greet the people in person. And I cannot tell you how good of an idea that has been. Would you agree, board members? We have been able to go and meet so many amazing neighbors, so many amazing community members, businessmen and women and professionals and young people and the elders. We have been able to just get around the entire district, and now we wind up back, back here at Pay Workman. And as I said, you know, we will stop our tour when our building is totally renovated, because at 127 Penn, we deserve a total renovation. And we are undergoing millions of dollars of renovation at 127 Pennsylvania. And trust me, myself and the district manager and, and, and others, we've been looking at these blueprints. The design is amazing. And when we move back into that building, we should all be proud to be in Community Board 5. For those of you who do not know, under this new leadership and combined leadership, we revamped Community Board 5 in a good way. We combine our efforts, our expertise with our senior community board members that, that have been on the board for years and been educating us, those of us that have been new members coming on the board on how to conduct board business. And we've made a pact that we will make sure that we go public and we will look good. And boy, oh boy, do we look good. Yes. So we wanted to make, that's what I'm talking about this morning. Don't look like you don't look good. You spend a lot of time in the mirror for that purpose, am I right? 
But it's time that it should not go to Because this was a time when people looked at CB5 and Eastern York and they didn't like what they saw. But we've been pretty much collectively agreed to, to change the image of, of, of what our community looks like and what it sounds like. Because we want to be prepared to all the other great neighbors and uh, the communities in Brooklyn and the city around. So, if you haven't come to any of our Brooklyn meetings, you would maybe explain how we do business. We open up as I do, as I did. We turn the microphone over to the community first. Unlike on the boards where you go, you have to listen to the board and all these other officials, and then be the community last. At CP5, the community goes first. And we put the community first so that we, the board membership, the elected officials, and their representatives, we are here in city agencies. We are trying to listen to you. So if there's an issue that we hear that can be resolved right here on the spot, it's our duty to approach you and give you that understanding of how we can help you right on the spot. But we also encourage community that after we listen to you and you get two minutes, maybe three, to get it out there, we're going to ask that you remain patient and stay behind and then witness and watch and learn how community board business is conducted. Because the other part of this meeting is the board and the board members that have been appointed to the board by our great borough president and city elected officials. We are, we took a vote to make sure that we conduct certain business and you should want to learn how that, um, that business impacts you. So, what we want to do is we want to call individuals up that signed in. We don't we definitely want to make a camera. Well, my man, I'm my man, I'm my brother Mary. Come on up here, please, and give us a welcoming statement from the brothers and sisters of Canva Hour and our partners partners here. We are really appreciate it. Let me this mic right here. Good evening, good evening. Um, I just want to welcome everybody to the Penn Workman Community Center. Uh, I don't know how many people have been here before, uh, but we're doing a lot of great things here. But for those who don't know, not only is this a senior center from 7 to 3, but this an after school program from 2.30 to 10. So we open every day from 7 to 10. In the summers, we're open seven days a week. We have programs for seniors. We have after school programs. We have summer camp. We have holiday camp programs, all the services are free. So if you have kids who are in high school who need community service, they need to be a part of a youth service, a youth leadership group, we have that. Uh, if you have young people or parents who are looking to, to get in shape or learn a trade or a skill or use computers, we have access to it. So we just want you to, we want to thank you for coming out and just enjoy the meeting. Have a good day. that can give the microphone to the person who signed up and that way we, we can limit a lot of the, the movement. Yeah, you signed in already? Yeah, so I just want to ask Brother Karan, we'll call a name and you can get them this microphone, please. Thank you. Okay, all right. So, the first person to speak to us from the community is a young brother who is a film director and a producer. He has a film that is opening already, has opened already uh, the week or two ago. It's showing at the Mindenplex Theater, and I'm very grateful that he stopped by today to help us understand and learn more about his film. His name is Brother Abdul Danger. Thank you. Um, so I want to thank Steve Mitchell and Community Board 5 for, uh, for having me here today um, and all the uh, community members of our board. Uh, first, my name is Abdul Dandridge. Um, I'm the writer, director, and producer of the feature film titled Pressure, and I own a film studio uh, titled Pressure Entertainment Films, LLC. 
Um, I wrote the film because I wanted to make a change in our adolescents. Uh, they were making wrong choices. Um, the film is about a young adolescent who learns life, life lessons from a dream. And basically, um, I'm from the 70s, and I've seen a lot of kids uh, lose their life over drugs and gun violence. So what I did was I made a film that will reflect them, but also speak with the vernacular of the streets so they could understand. Um, and, with, and with that being said, I, I develop a program where I actually come into the schools, I talk to the kids, and I let them see highlights, the 26-minute highlights of the film. Then we do some Q&A. And then after that, the school buses them out, and they go watch the film, and then they come back, and then we have a discussion about it. And what that did, it opened uh, a lot of dialogue uh, with the kids, because now they are interested in talking about their own situations and how they're starting to think different. So I feel that uh, this film can actually make a change uh, within our young generation now and help them to start to think different. I mean, we don't have a gang problem. We just got a bunch of kids who are making wrong choices and no one's leading them in, in the right direction. So uh, with that being said, the reason why I can't stay today is because uh, the Boys and Girls Club was actually one of the groups that came and saw the film. Now they want me back and I'm supposed to be there at 7.30. So they are excited. They were, in the, they were in the theater yelling and screaming and, you know, and, and, and it's very impressive to see kids at that age that you can actually reach, and now they want to have a conversation to, you know, with you and whatnot. So they was able to look at me as a reflection of them, and, and they see that I own my own company. So not only that we talk about the film and some of the things that can uh, change their mind and, it, and then the way they think, we also talk about black entrepreneurship. So I talk to them about uh, starting a business and things like that and how I've done it, uh, and how uh, I'm still standing here today, running the business and making a living from it. So I'm actually from Four Green Projects in Brooklyn. So what I also did, uh, making a film, I bring it back to my uh, community and hire some of the kids that were in my school in the film to inspire them. Not only that, now some of them want to be filmmakers. So the film is powerful. Uh, it has a, it's, a, it's a conscious film with a powerful message at the end. Parents were there. We even had seventh and eighth graders come through with their parents and applauding. So with that being said, uh, I don't want to take it too long. Uh, gentleman A.T. Mitchell uh, giving me an opportunity to do this, so, and I want to give everybody the respect, the same respect. So please come and support the film, because if not, they're going to pull it, and I won't be able to uh, continue the program to change the concept and the, and the psyche of these kids to doing the right thing. So, Linden Boulevard Multiplex, A.T. Mitchell, I love him. Big man doing his thing. <laughs> Panther, um, and now we get a chance to show love to a, a grassroots all, um, movie that's been made by our own local brother right here who's actually in front of us, so that's a good look. The next person um, on our list is, is Liz Torres? Luz, I was going to say it, but there you have it. The microphone's right there. Thank you. Come on in. Okay. Thank you, Luz. Next is Miss Mitchell. Miss Mitchell. About 16 months ago, we 
okay to create more of a situation with the DOT parking lot. And we are the uh, homeowners who live across the street. Uh, we come bearing and not understanding where to go. And I want to let everybody know that the community board wants. Uh, we've come to a resolution. I think it's fair. And we're happy with the decision. And I just want to say thank you. I, I appreciate it. Um, just thank you so much. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. So we have Hannah Ma Martinez. Hannah Martinez. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Hannah I'm from Bruin, YC, and I'm here with my colleague Michael Reeser over there. Um, you may remember me from. Uh, Um, <laughs> nice. um, so I just wanted to uh, remind those who already know about us and those who don't know about us um, to tell you about some of our programming. We do everything um, recycling and zero waste related to educate residents um, to keep waste out of landfills. Um, one of the ways we do that is we host stop and swap events and um, there's actually in this um, booklet over on the back table, you can see we have a stop and swap event coming up at um, Brooklyn Borough Hall Plaza on Thursday, April 19th. And what this is, is a free um, community exchange of, you know, uh, clothing, books, toys, anything portable and reusable. Um, so a great way to keep things out of landfills and take something home for free. Um, we also do tabling, um, be it at community events, uh, where we play a fun recycling game, which was um, what I did last time at the America Recycle Days meeting. Um, we do presentations, and if you're if you're organizing community events, we're happy to assist you in um, having recycling at your events. Um, so we have education resources for that as well. Um, for those who are um, nature residents, right? So anyone who lives at Penn Wortman. Um, we have a program specifically for, whoop, I need an, I'll put this here, um, for public housing residents to educate their neighbors about recycling, right? As much as we love to come out and educate, um, it's, the message is um, so much more poignant when it's coming from someone who is your neighbor, someone who you know and you have a relationship with. Um, and basically, um, the resident would attend two educational workshops where they would be trained on how to do community outreach and then complete 12 hours of outreach at their development or at a, another NYCHA development. And um, we currently have uh, funding to offer a $100 gift card to those who participate in that program. So it's a great um, resource and you can grab a card. Um, if you're interested in working with us as a community organization, as a volunteer, whatever it may be, um, we have a um, newsletter sign-in sheet. Um, I have some of my business cards is there, but I'm going to be around um, after the meeting. So you're, um, you know, please find me and talk to me if you want to discuss any ways that we can collaborate. Uh, I'm done. Okay. Okay. No problem. <laughs> How you doing, everyone? Um, I'm, on be I'm here on behalf of Campus, Campus Health Home Program. I'm a social service worker for them. And basically, the Campus Health Home Program is, start a, is a Medicaid-funded program that's designed to help Medicaid recipients in this community. And it's basically anybody who's eligible um, might have a chronic condition, might have a mental uh, diagnosis, might have HIV or AIDS, uh, or might be dealing with substance abuse. And the, the point of this program is to provide uh, these potential residents with extra help, whether that's with case management, whether that's connecting them to government um, entitlement, whether that's with housing uh, assistance, whether that's with um, employment, education. This program is designed to uh, 
better help, sorry, to better, uh, to navigate better through the health system because as we know, it is a difficult system to navigate by yourself. If you don't know uh, where to go, who to talk to, um, basically, we are, I'm working out of the uh, Cypress Hills and the Pink Houses Community Center. I'm there on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10 to 6. Um, it's a voluntary program. It's Medicaid funded, and this is just to uh, give you more support, more assistance if you need it. Um, that's basically it. Thank you for your time. Sadiqi Zavagato. All right, good, good evening, everyone. My name is Siddiqui Savadogo, and uh, I'm a community outreach and recruitment specialist at Mentor New York. So, Mentor New York is a nonprofit um, organization that provides mentorship opportunity for kids in our communities. So, we work with schools and community-based organizations to help them create like a mentoring program. So, we also recruit mentors for uh, existing mentoring program as well. As you know, our young adults um, are struggling a lot with uh, with issues in our community. And with that being said, I commend our uh, like a sister organization, Manup, who is actually involved in helping those kids, uh, taking them out of the street. So these are all great work. So for those who are interested in becoming a mentor, uh, it can that person can now um, see me afterwards. We can we can talk and discuss further. Thank you. Hotel. My name is Brother Kenny. I'm the director of the Fatherhood Initiative and the Mentorship Program at Man Up Inc. I have two quick announcements. Um, one of those announcements is the, um, the continuation of our boys club at the new PJAC um, Community Center that's gonna be on Skank. And um, I'm just really excited to continue the work that we've been doing. Um, young, these young boys and, and working with them was, was, was a very good experience for me and, and it's for them as well because um, when the brothers talking about the film, we took the young brothers to see the film Pressure. I'm not Pressure, I'm sorry, the um, Panther, Black, Black, Black Panther. And uh, Panther it was, right? His name was called Panther. It's Panther. Right, so, and um, the excitement that was in their eyes, it was very, um, it was um, a very, very good experience for them and, as well as for myself. But the second part of, of um, this announcement is I would like to speak to you about is um, our, father's, our father's program. We have a father's program that we're running out of, um, out of 166 Gershwin, and um, we deal, we're, what we're basically trying to do is get fathers to become more active in their communities and their families and their um, children's lives. Um, one of the projects that we're working on is called the Wounded Fathers Project, Project, and we're basically trying to just have fathers deal with some of the, um, some of the uh, issues of dealing with violence. So this week we have a, a forum with Brother Kevin Powell and it's um, violence against women. So um, anyone who might, might be interested in coming to, to uh, join us and um, find out some information and try to um, just find out what you can um, learn from, from uh, Brother Powell from, you know, from some of the things that he's been uh, pretty much uh, been doing the work he's been doing. I don't know if you know about Kevin Powell, but he's been doing a lot of phenomenal work with um, domestic violence. And uh, that's one of the things we've been working on is um, domestic violence because that's been like one of the main uh, issues that um, the course has been dealing with. DV has been growing and we're trying to uh, uh, kind of uh, deal with some of the DV issues that we're dealing with in our, in our community. There's a um, big rise, it got so big that they even started a whole new department um, in the courts for just DV alone. So um, a lot of us are affected by violence and we, we, we just are walking it around every day like it's, like it's nothing. But um, it is um, affecting us and we just need more men and um, some of our boys to come out and try to get some, some, some of these services and um, some support on trying to make us um, 
well again. Like I said, I'm, I am the director of the Fatherhood Initiative, and I'm not just the president, I'm also the client. So, <laughs> so, you know, like I said, we all have our issues. There's no perfect way of being a father. It's, um, it's always constantly, constantly growing and, um, and evolving. So um, I'm looking for your support as men and fathers in the community to step up and just really uh, just get better because we need our men in our community. All right, thank you. Joshua Barker. Good evening. Um, how many of you guys think that East New York is a little bit dirty? Okay. So, um, on Monday, April 9th, at 333 New Lots Avenue, we're having our first sanitation and environmental town hall meeting. Um, we want to address some of the issues with the cleanliness in our borough, in our district. Um, there's a growing concern of garbage, dumping, abandoned cars, those type of things. So um, we want to start talking to sanitation about it. Um, also, private sanitation will be there to speak to some of the businesses, because some of the businesses are responsible to hire private sanitation, and they're not doing it. So you know, there's just an excessive amount of garbage everywhere. So um, my office number is um, 718. Six seven nine five nine two zero. If you would like more information on it, um, once again the address is three thirty three New Lots Avenue, and let's come out and speak to sanitation about how our community looks. Okay, have a good night. Benita McCray. Good evening. Hi. My name is Benita McCray. I'm a branch manager of Spring Creek Library. For the residents, it's two blocks away. I don't see anyone. I'm going to tell you that we have free programs. After school, we have homework or helper, our volunteers here, Miss Arlene. If she's lucky, she get one child once a week, and she's there three hours. For the adults, we have free computer classes. For those of you that don't know how to use the computer, come to the library. Books, DVDs, anything that you need to learn, we can reach out and touch you. <laughs> so I just want to let you guys know that the library is two blocks away. For the parents, send your kids, bring your kids. We're not the daycare center, but we welcome them. Thank you. Kareem Neely. Good evening, guys. Excuse me. My name is uh, Kareem Nemley. I'm the founder and artistic director of Rooted Theater Company right here in East New York, our very own. Um, I want to let you know that we are putting on our second production, thanks to the community board last year for their assistance and their help with our first production of A Lesson Before Dying. This June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, we'll be putting on For Colored Girls Who Have Considered Suicide When a Rainbow is Enough. It will be held at 534 Livonia Avenue at Arts East New York, and here's the kicker. The tickets are free. All you have to do is grab a flyer from the back and reserve your seats. That's all we ask for you to do. At the end of every show, we have a talk back where we uh, discuss the show and discuss uh, how it relates to you and the community and et cetera. So um, please do pick up a flyer in the back. I'll be here throughout the meeting uh, if you have any questions. And lastly, Rooted Theater Company is sponsoring a trip to the African American Museum in DC. Um, this trip will be happening in August. There are flyers just like this one sitting in the back. If you have any questions, just let me know. Ben Jung. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? 
Yes. Uh, thank you, Community Board 5, and good evening, everyone. How are you tonight? My name is Tammy Green, and I'm representing Pro Fitness One on One in collaboration with Cornerstone Seventh Day Adventist Church. And to the sister that spoke, that worked for the library, yes, knowledge is power, and health is your. Yes, so much. So, no matter what we do, whether we're teachers, whether we're doctors, lawyers, mothers, students, we have to invest in our health. And if we don't have that, we can't do any of this great work that we're doing. Uh, we're only as strong as the community that unites and implement what is right for our families and for everyone that is here from all ethnic backgrounds. And this is why it's important that we uh, represent what health and fitness is all about and wellness. What we're doing, even though spring has come in with a wintry blizzard, spring is here now, and so we have to shift gears and get on the right track. So without further ado, I want everyone to stand to their feet right now, put down them papers, and stand to your feet right now. Let's go, you only got two seconds. One, two, stand up. Put them arms up in the air. Reach up high. All right, and we're gonna press it up like this. Watch me, and one. Two, let me hear you count. Four, I can't hear you. Come on, push it up, push it up, push it up, push it up. I want you to sit down in that chair and get right back up 10 times for me so we're gonna sit it down. <laughs> All right, listen, listen. I'll, I'll save that for when, All right, calm down. When you come to class, right now, Pro Fitness 101, I'm from the north side. This is the south side, right? I'm from the north side, Highland, Highland Park. Where we all East New York, I just wanna let you. Oh, y'all better stop it. All of East New York. So we're doing our spring fit classes, Highland Park, Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Sundays at 10 a.m. We're gonna do exercise, we're gonna talk about detox programs, we're gonna do fun fit run programs, walking programs. We also wanna bring this program over to this side as well. So I'm gonna be in the back, come sign in, we'll come to your organization, we'll come to your community center, we'll come to your park, and we'll find a program that fits right with you. Remember, invest in your wealth. One more quick thing I wanna talk about on the side where I am, Highland Boulevard, the area is changing all over East New York. What I'm noticing is that a lot of the crosswalks and a lot of the pedestrian walk pathways, that white uh, strip is being, uh, what is it, disappearing. And I'm just concerned about the bike lanes that's disappearing and it needs a new pay job, we need speed bumps. I'm particularly talking about Highland Boulevard between Miller and, um, what is that, Jackie Robinson Parkway or for the Bushwick. It's a very uh, highly speed zone. We have new houses that went up there and it's not safe for the children. So those are the, my two concerns. And don't forget, come check us out and come see me in the back. Thank you so much. Charles Bullock. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Charles Bullock. Um, I've, I've been living in Brownsville most of my life. Um, I'm a union carpenter, union trustee, and also a shop steward for the union. I've been doing that for 13 years. Um, I left some information in the back. We're having a, a recruitment for the apprenticeship April 9th. Um, all you need to, the requirements are that you need to be 17 years old, have a high school diploma or GED, and just go there with a um, state ID and you have an opportunity to be apprentice for the union. The difference between union and non-union is health benefits and things like that to help your family. I know you guys see the big change in East New York and a lot of these jobs are non-union. Um, there's like a handful of contractors that go into these job sites and none of them are union. If we have one contractor that's union, you have an opportunity for someone to get a job with benefits. There's a lot of 
deaths that, that, that's been happening on job sites, and these people aren't trained, these people aren't documented. Um, my, my whole goal is to have some type of union presence on these job sites so there could be an opportunity for a young black gentleman like myself to get an opportunity to be a part of a union and have a job to actually, you know, to, to actually su support their family. Um, so um, there's 100 apprentices that they're gonna select. They're giving out 250 applica applications. So the um, time is 6 a.m. and the place is 395 Hudson Street and this is in Manhattan, New York. You could take the A train to West 4th Street. You could take the three train and transfer at train Chambers Street to Houston Street to get there. So um, the time is 6 a.m. Get there early because there's people sitting out there with tents but they're selecting 250 people. My name is Charles Bullock. You could use my name as a reference. So all those people that's lining it up, it don't make no difference because I'm here and I got me as a reference, all right? So I left the information in the back. Again, my name is Charles Bullock. I'm also a part of the youth committee. We had a successful event in February with Sadiq and we're doing more youth town halls and I want the community to be more involved and to come out to these meetings for the youth because the youth is the future. And the difference between the baby boomers and, and the millennials is that we, got, we, we both got to get together and make it happen so we, we could progress for the future. Thank you. So, so um, thank you for that, Brother Bullock. So the next person up is myself. <laughs> and I want to be able to be the person to actually inform the entire community of East New York and surrounding communities that we are excited to officially report to you, those of you who may have not seen on your come in, this picture of this beautiful two-story, state-of-the-art, multi-million dollar community center that has been named the Prince Josh Avito's Community Center. It's on Prince Joshua Avito Way, also known as Skank Avenue. And I am here tonight to let you know that we have officially, along with our partnership, Man Up Inc. and Good Shepherd Services, have been, the building has been turned over to us, the community. And now we are excited to let you know that as of April 9th, which is two Mondays from now, we are going to be opening our doors of the Prince Joshua Vito Community Center for the very first time. There were flyers in your seats, and so there's a lot of things that we have planned um, that's going to happen out of this community center. We are excited. It's been about two and a half years in the making. And we are ecstatic. But we want the community to know that this is their building and that we want you to use it. It's not a NYCHA community center. It's a community center for real. It's not a north side or a south side community center. It's a community center for all. And so the ninth we're going to be opening, it's a soft opening, meaning that we just want to, I don't want to, we don't want to keep the doors locked anymore. We want you all to come in. We want your spirits and your bodies to be in there. And if you haven't been paying attention, the trial for Prince Joshua Vito has been underway for the last two weeks. And so hopefully uh, a verdict will be rendered sometime very soon. And the families of not just Prince Joshua, but Michaela Capers and, and uh, the young sister Copeland, who's also um, unfortunately you know, killed around that same time, um, they will get some sort of closure to what happened to their loved ones in that elevator on Skank Avenue now four years ago. And it would not be, I think it's, it's going to be even more of us up to be able to, to show out of a negative situation something positive can come about. And the Prince Joshua Vito Community Center is going to be that positive place and space for young people to come and enjoy all spring, summer, and forever long. I want to publicly thank our council member, Inez Barron, and her beautiful husband, 
the assembly member Charles Barron, because of these two elected officials, and I'm not taking nothing away from the others, but because of these two elected officials, the money was secured, the place was secured, the block was secured, and now our community is even more secure. And so you should call them up and thank them and let them know that we are appreciative for the work that they put in to make this center a reality. It is finally here, April 9th. Like Brother Kenny was telling you about the Boys Club and all the other great services that we're gonna be doing, Man Up Inc. and Good Circuit Services as of next month. I just wanted to let you all see this and know that publicly. Thank you. I also want to let everybody know that you see the cameras. I forgot to talk about it in the beginning. But we want to thank WNET. They are filming, and this is live stream. Our community board meeting is being live streamed right now. And this is a taping, but you can see it literally live. If you tell your family members, they can watch us now at the board at home, at YouTube. They can go to YouTube and type in Community Board 5, and you can watch me point at the camera, literally like this. Right now, they can watch the community board and be present at the community board meeting as well. So we want to thank WNET, Council Member Rafael Espinal, for helping secure the opportunity for them to be here. We thank them so much. Now, you still got to come. <laughs> Second vice said, do we, do, we still, do we have to still come to the meetings? Yes, you still have to be physically present to be, to be counted. I want to, at that same time, I want to recognize the elected officials and their staff. Do you see it? you see it, sister? Yeah, I'm telling you, it's real. You can go to your cell phones. You can see us. We're live streaming right now. So I want to call up the elected officials, reps that are here, if they would like to report anything. We appreciate them for being present at every community board meeting. And so I would like to recall... Um, Brother Anthony Drummond from the Bell President's Office, if he would care to come forward. And Kathleen is with you, right? She's going to make an announcement. Understood, but let's give it, let's give it up for Anthony Drummond. He's going to come up for the, the Bell President's Office. And our youngest board member, right there. One year, we're going to get it to that age. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, just one actually quick announcement. Um, my colleague Kathleen Daniels from our office, she's our outreach director, was going to make the announcement about our um, upcoming NORCAN event. And the first one that's actually going to be taking place, um, there's some flyers on the back in regards to NORCAN. What it is is um, obviously there's been a big epidemic that's been going on throughout our communities relating to drug overdose, the opioids, and all that. And so we're going to be having a forum, and we're going to have the first one kicking off here in East New York on April, um, April 5th at the New Lost Library at 6 p.m. So I have some flyers. They're in the back. Um, so we hope to get the folks out here in the community out. I know I've been reaching out. I sent some flyers as well electronically to the Community Board 5 office. But we really want to get the community out um, and as many people as possible to attend this, as this has been a big concern and issue that's been going on. So that's my only announcement really to you all here. Thank you. Um, brother, father, Mel Faulkner from Assembly Member Charles Barron's office. Good evening, everyone. One important announcement tonight, okay? Do you know what's gonna happen on April 3rd? Any idea? If you were not present at the uh, St. Paul's Community Baptist Church on the 12th, there were five, 600 people there. In this bag are the last of the applications that you can apply for. This is a full application kit. I've been giving this out over in Brownsville. 32 of them went to Brownsville people on their community boards at their meetings last night. I'm saying to you now, the rules is 50% of the 83 homes go and stay in East New York. The remaining is for everybody. So the opportunity, I want to be honest with you, it's a lottery system. You pick it, you win it, you have to have the down payment, you'll have to have the closing costs on these homes. However, 
you have a first hand opportunity. There's 83 brand new homes that are actually being completed as we speak now. I want you to know if you need one of these, see me before the night is over. I'm not going to take any more time to give them out or go into any additional details. But if you need one, I will be here. If you need more than eight, my office, I can run them off tomorrow morning for you. But I want you to know the deadline, April 3rd, no extension on that whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Brother Latif Terrell from State Senator Roxanne Prasad's office. Brother Latif. Good evening, everyone. My name is Latif Terrell. I'm from Senator Prasad's district office. She sends her regards from Albany. I just have a, uh, a couple of quick updates. Uh, Saturday, April 7th, we have a rain barrel giveaway. Um, the flyer is, in the, is uh, on the table in the back. If you're a homeowner, you can get a free rain barrel from uh, DEP uh, from a partnership with her and Senator, uh, with them and Senator Prasad. Um, also, I have this college fair flyer. So I've, I've personally put this event together myself. So uh, I'd just like to say that it, this is going to be on Saturday, April 14th at the South Shore uh, Complex. There will be over 70 colleges represented. Um, every SUNY and CUNY school will be there. Uh, along with that, it's more than just a college fair, it's also a resource fair. So there will be um, some, some jobs that will be offered, um, summer youth camp enrollment, and then I went out and found some organizations like Camp Brooklyn Fund that can provide financial aid for the summer youth camp uh, enrollment. So you can enroll your child and get the aid in the exact same place. Uh, as well as um, I contacted the US Department of Education. We will have a rep coming down from Washington to do federal student aid. So they will be there to uh, walk uh, parents, youth alike, through the, the whole process of applying for financial aid, the grants, the scholarships, the eligibility. Um, so, and, and as well as that, also from the state aid, because there's two types of financial aid that you can receive when going to college. A lot of people don't realize this. They fill out the FAFSA, they don't go after the state aid as well. Um, so if you're, if you're a resident of New York, there's also the Accessler grant. You know, these things will be talked about. A lot, of, we, a lot of our youth can be going to school for free. They just don't know that it's out there and uh, they need help sometimes with the application. So I put together this college and resource fair. Uh, it's in partnership with Alan Mizell's office, um, Assemblywoman uh, Jamie Williams' office, and all of the schools at the South Shore campus. Uh, other than that, I uh, hope everyone has a good evening. If you have any questions, I'll be in the back. Thank you. From District Attorney Eric Evan Gonzalez's office, Brother Frangel Basara. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, my name is uh, Frangel Basara. I am from the District Attorney's office. Very quickly, in terms of the theme with schooling, um, the DA's office is offering a summer high school internship program for rising sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Um, I have the, the flyers in the back, but very quickly, the application includes a one-page re resume, personal statement, academic transcript, and letter recommendation. It's a five-week internship program in the summertime, um, and it is paid. Uh, it's $150 per week, which can make a, a huge difference for high school students. Uh, MetroCard provided, and the deadline is the is Friday, April 27th. Um, another update very quickly, the DA's office in conjunction with Police Commissioner O'Neill and the New York City Council recently uh, announced the launch of Project Clear, uh, which is basically an initiative uh, for people who are arrested uh, for the misdemeanor of, of drug possessions. Uh, it's basically a treatment program that uh, gives them the uh, opportunity to just undergo uh, a process of treatment. Um, and the DA, along with just the rest of the officials, uh, promised to uh, just release uh, the person, or the arrested person of the conviction of the misdemeanor, uh, if the person successfully undergoes the treatment. So again, this is more so uh, Mr. Gonzalez's attempt to address the opi opioid and the drug uh, situation that we have in New York City and to make sure that we're not necessarily criminalizing addiction, we're more so helping um, our people out. 
and and many of our people are struggling, especially in New York City, especially in Brooklyn as well. Um, if you guys, I work as the liaison to East New York, so I'm going to give you my email address, and then I'm going to step off. My email is last name Basora, B as in boy, A S O R A, first initial F at brooklynda.org. Feel free to email me for anything. My number is 718-250-2138. Again, that's 718-250-2138. Thank you very much. Thank you. From Council Member Nidia Velasquez Office, Julio Salazar is here. Thank you for coming. Good evening, everyone. My name is Julio Salazar from Congresswoman Velasquez's office, and I'd just like to give you guys a brief uh, legislative update on something very important that happened this, uh, this uh, last month. So as you guys know, Congress just passed a, uh, a, a massive spending bill. It was called the Omnibus Bill. Uh, we, you've seen that we've had shutdown after shutdown um, late 2017 and going into the new year. So Congress had to figure out how they were going to fund the government uh, going in at least for the next, next six months. So they passed a $1.3 trillion spending bill that'll get us through September, and we'll have to, re, re, uh, to begin those renegotiations to figure out how we'll fund the government after September. But I wanna give you guys uh, just a brief outline of a few good things that came out of this. Um, firstly, uh, FUD, uh, HUD funding. So the president initially requested a four point, sorry, requested a $9.6 billion cut to some of the core programs of HUD. That would include Section 8, uh, Section 9, some uh, 202 uh, vouchers as well for our seniors. Uh, however, at the end of the, of the discussions, uh, HUD was able to come out with a $4.6 billion increase in their budget. Uh, that would be enough uh, to renew some of the, ex to renew the existing Section 8 contracts and also expand some more to both vets and those with uh, disabilities. Secondly, uh, Section 202 housing for the elderly was given $678 uh, million, and the, VAT and the VASH program, which is for vets, uh, was also expanded as well. Uh, for DOE, uh, the president initially requested a $9.2 billion cut in their funding. That would mean a decrease in Title I, Title II, and Title III money. Uh, that's money that come into our public schools to train our teachers uh, for uh, English classes, all type of programs that uh, our public schools use. Um, however, at the end of negotiations, DOE came out with a $2.6 billion increase in their budget. Uh, that's, that's definitely some, something the Democratic Party has been pushing for. Uh, they'll continue to push for more going into the next budgetary discussions, but we're glad that the Republican Party ditched uh, their, the administration and the request uh, to drastically cut some of the, some of the programs our children uh, use uh, after school programs, to, to name one. Uh, and thirdly, HHS, Health and Human Services got a $10 billion increase. Those, those are funds that go out into our communities, community clinics, uh, programs that, you know, a lot of the times we might have hospitals that uh, might assist the elderly, uh, vets, uh, all sorts of health programs. Uh, luckily enough, we were able to secure uh, additional funding, and the member is glad that, again, the Republican Party ditched the administration in calling for cuts. So those are three pieces of good, of good news. Um, the, the president at the very end was very reluctant to sign this bill. Why? Because he created a massive uh, budget hole uh, because of his tax cuts, so he didn't want to spend any money. Uh, but the Democratic Party was able to push through some of these, some of these key proposals and get it passed. And the member is is happy that both the, the New York delegation, especially our, uh, Congressman Jeffries, that signed on to her letter calling for the administration to reconsider some of the cuts that he was proposing to to HUD that would affect many of uh, uh, of the people in Cypress Hills in our community across the district. Um, again. The Congresswoman will, will continue to fight uh, with the next battle, and that's going to be entitlement reform. They're going to make sure, the, and when I say they, the Republican Party, is going, to make tr is going to try to get their way going into the next year. 
because they weren't able to get in the, budget, in, in the budgetary discussions, but they want to do what's called entitlement reform. And those are programs that you use, and, and the Congress will make sure that our community has a voice. And I think I'm running out of time, but I'll be right here if you have any questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Yes, sir. We had a question. Oh, we to, uh, you know, entertain one question from uh, the treasurer, Albert Scott. I'm sorry. We will entertain two questions, and but it is almost approaching a quarter to eight. I just want us to know that. So, go ahead. So what I what I like to say is that especially when it comes to schools and and public housing, those are uh, those are two things that are operated either by the city and the state. So a lot of the federal funding that comes down really ends up uh, uh, channeling down after, as we can tell, New York, the the state is is working out their budgetary uh, their budget right now. So after they present their budget, we'll start to have a sense of what exactly is coming into our community. But overall. No, but, but you're definitely right, and, 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 I'll, uh, and I'll, of course, share that information with you. Board member Plummer. My question is, are we talking about the implementation of that budget July 1, October 1, to October 1 or July 1 of 2019? What's the fiscal year? And does the fact that it is a temporary means that it is it is prorated based on that stop gap. Right. So again, like I said at the at the outset, we've been seeing shutdown after shutdown. I believe we had one in late 2017. So again, this really isn't a long-term spending bill by any means. Um, but again, the Republican Party decided that they wanted to fund the government up until September. And we're going to be in the same budgetary discussions again after September, trying to avoid a shutdown. So again, this isn't a long-term spending bill, um, but it got us uh, further enough to have to not do this every two weeks or every three weeks. Um, but again, it, it, it's not a long-term spending bill. Okay. So I would definitely thank you so much for that. So anyone that, and we're going to ask if you can stick around. So that at the end of the meeting, if any other questions that need to be asked of, of Congress member Velasquez's office rep, he will be here, right? Okay? With that said, I want to thank all of the elected officials, representatives that are present, that have spoken and given us information. I want to thank all of the community members who have spoken and has brought forth information. Hopefully, the general public, the community, has been able to learn something and hear something that can hopefully be helpful to you and you can be able to spread that word also to your neighbors. Um, and with that, um, I want to just officially, you know, let the community know that board members are, that we are at quorum. And so we can move our agenda uh, forward effectively. With that said, we do have a presentation this tonight from the uh, New York City Housing Preservation Department, uh, HPD, and the Ms. Binghamum, if you could come forward to give us your presentation, we'd be greatly appreciated. Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, thank you so much for being patient with us. Um, my name is Bin Jung, and I am a neighborhood planner at the Department of Housing Preservation and Development. 
And I'm here with two of my colleagues. I'm here with Dwan Stark, who is from our pre-development unit, and with Jocelyn Torrio, who is here from Brooklyn Planning. And so they're handing out flyers right now um, that's advertising a community workshop that's coming up. So this workshop is on the Grant Avenue Muni lot. Does everybody know where the Grant Avenue Muni lot is? OK, great. So the Grant Avenue Muni lot is located right on top of the Grant Avenue A subway train station. And so through the East New York neighborhood plan, this Muni lot was identified for feasibility analysis to see if development could happen on it. HPD determined that it was feasible to build on it, and so we're moving forward with the process of trying to figure out what we'd like to have built there. We're in the beginning phases of engagement and outreach, and so as you'll see in this flyer that you're being handed out, we'll be having a community workshop on Monday, April 9th from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at PS214 at 2944 Pitkin, which is right down the street from the Grant Ave subway station. So after you're done going into the soft opening of the new community center, we welcome you to come here to this workshop. And so at this workshop, what we'll be doing is getting community feedback, getting community preferences on what they would like to see built in terms of affordable housing. The site is slated for 100% affordable housing with some room available for community facilities, commercial retail if folks would like it possibly, as well as open space. And so at the workshop, we'll work through a bunch of activities that'll get community feedback on what affordability levels y'all would like to see in the new development, what preferences you have in terms of community facility space, how you would like to see the buildings laid out on the actual site, and what kind of open space you'd like to see on the site itself. There's going to be Spanish and Bengali translation. The flyer here is in English and Spanish. We're working on the Bengali translation right now. And there's going to be snacks and refreshments. There's going to be childcare. So please, if you have children, don't feel like you can't come. We'd like to have everybody present to get folks' preferences, to hear what the community needs are, and to hear what it is that y'all would like to see on the site. So again, that's Monday, April 9th. We're going to leave a bunch of flyers in the back, too. If you are part of an organization, if you're part of a tenant association, if you want to take flyers back and spread the word, please do. It's Monday, April 9th, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at PS214, which is just down the block on Pitkin Avenue from the train station. Is there time to take questions? Or I don't, I don't know how to Sure, we can, we can entertain a couple of questions. Um, so, board member Bullock. So just for the record, so, so you guys understand, it's interesting that Ms. Mitchell um, and others, that they're talking about almost the same area where you all live, you know, and it was interesting to learn that the city now is planning on doing something with part of that um, municipal parking lot, and this includes a housing program, uh, that's, uh, this is a housing proposal that they're speaking of. So the folks in your area need to be make sure that we turn out for this community meeting or workshop that they have in because it has a direct impact on Okay? So I just wanted just to point that out, that this is one of those community workshops where the people of that area, my brothers and sisters from the Bangladeshi community that live back there, that, that work back there, that have business back there, you need to make sure that you are well represented so that you can ask all of the questions and have some part or in the design or whatever else those things that they will present and 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 leave nothing out leave no stone unturned um we want to let the city know everything that we have been letting them know over the last several years when they plan to build inside our district and this should be no different okay so this is what they're speaking to board member should be uh, so, you know, this, this time frame might not bring up the best uh, population that we would like to see. So I was wondering if it was possible that we could also host another type of event like this on a weekend, particularly in a, earlier in the day to allow and accommodate for other individuals in the community to attend. 
Yes, thank you. We've heard that as well. We're, gonna, we're starting with this one workshop that's having, that will be held on this Monday. We're also having an online community questionnaire for folks who might not be able to make it to the workshop. And we're looking at different ways that we could do outreach to to get the full number of participation that we can. But I would also like to echo what Andre saying, in terms of coming out to this workshop, please do, it's highly encouraged, bring all of your feedback. Everything you say will just only work to enrich the project. So please come, and thank you. Uh, Ms. Bain, thank you so much for coming and uh, giving us a presentation on this project. It's a project that we're gonna really be interested in shaping it. So one of the points that I would like to make that the agency come to us and they ask our input. We give them the input then many of our input are not incorporated at the project. Now agency need to come back to us and tell us why they are not part of the project. They need to come and give us an explanation. Otherwise, what's the point of coming and getting the input? No, we hear that, yes. Transparency is something that's come up before again and again in our processes and folks always want to see more transparency and we can strive to be more transparent in this process and let you know about the decisions as much as possible. Okay. <laughs> Last question okay. for Member Paul Muhammad. We continue to hear this word uh, affordable. You have to define that when it comes to this community because we know about programs like Ella and everything to help to get deeply affordable to the AMI of this community. So when you say affordable, are you talking about the city, the city AMI, or are you talking about the East New York AMI? So affordable for whom is a question that we hear again and again. And HPD uses the federal, the HUD, New York City AMI, which is the area median income. That being said, we've also heard that it's too high for neighborhoods. And so we have term sheets that try to go with deeper affordability, the extremely low and low income affordability, Ella, that you said is one of them. HPD, our goal is to create these diverse mixed income neighborhoods, but we also want to recognize that affordable, affordability and deep affordability is something that is extremely important for folks, especially on public sites. So we have an opportunity to do that here, and we welcome that feedback as well at the workshop. Are they committed to So the, the site itself doesn't come with mandated a term sheet, but so it will depend on the financing, it will depend on the project by project. I think we have to go, is that right? I don't know. Yeah, but I will say that if you have any other questions outstanding that haven't been answered here, on the flyer itself is an email address, Grant Avenue Muni. If you run your questions to that email, you will get a response. Okay. So thank so you so you much. I would, just, I would just encourage community members that have questions, and sometimes these questions come after the meetings, right? And what you need to do is the, is the follow-up. Um, as she's mentioned, their contact information is there. If you see that the city council member's name is present, you can call his office, talk to his staff, all of the above. But make sure that you, you sound off and you make them aware of any question that may arise in your mind, even if it's not right now, but maybe tomorrow, so that the city can hear you and that they, it could be noted and it could be something that we can follow up as a community board in fact, if you did make a, a, a question to, you know, to their attention. So we thank you. Um, and oftentimes, you know, Bing and others like from the reps that come from the city, you are charged with coming into East New York and standing in front of this beautiful community and you gotta get charged the way that we want, you know, the way that we, you know, we, we understand it. But we, you know, it's not directed at you personally, but you represent an agency to us and that's where you hear all a lot of that's coming from, okay? And we hope that you take it back to work tomorrow and bring it to their attention, to some of the other people's attention that East New York and CB5 is really serious about any development that's gonna happen in our district going forward, all right? Thank you so much, we appreciate your time. We, um, I believe there was a diabetes education awareness, um, District office, are, are, they, are they present? Folks with the diabetes awareness? <coughs> diabetes education awareness going once. Nope. Three times. <laughs> All right, well thank you so much for that. And again, general public, we appreciate you being patient and listening attentively to what's been happening. 
What we encourage you now to do is to remain in your seats. If you can, we want to run through our community board business um, and have several things um, conducted in front of you. It's a very educational opportunity for you to learn how community boards um, operate and their, their part that they play in the ULERP um, as an advisory board. And so during the segments going forward, unfortunately, we cannot allow for community to have any more input at this point unless I, the chair, feel strongly that you need to be heard and if it's according to or something that you hear being discussed. Outside of that, as we, the board members that are present, if you can just raise your hand so people can know that we have been sitting in and all around about you. You notice the board members' hands who are risen? They, they, they have been listening to you. And, and, and we have heard you loud and clear. Now it's respectfully asked of you to listen to us. Is that fair? Yes. All right now, so with that said, allow me to entertain um, board members. You all have the agenda. Um, so I will entertain a motion to approve the, eight, uh, the March 28th agenda that's before you. It's made by board member Sadiq. It's second by board member Bright. All those members in favor say aye. Any um, um, objections, abstentions, the eyes have it, so the agenda has been approved. Board members, you have been forwarded, I'm sure, by email, um, a copy of last month's February min minutes. I will entertain a motion to approve the February uh, 2018 minutes. Any board member would like to make a motion to approve? Board member Riggins, and it is second by board member uh, Fisher. All those board members in favor say aye. Any objections? So the minutes from February have been approved. We now move on to committee reports. This is where committees that have met over the last 30 days, um, and we like to at least give at least priority to the committees that have things that, um, motions that need for voting to go first while we have quorum. And so if your committee does not have any item that you wanna report that requires a vote, I'm gonna ask that we yield to those committees that do. And I do understand that the Transportation Committee does have a number of motions. And with that, I want to turn it over to the chair, Mr. Ferretino. Good evening, everyone. Oh, y'all quiet in here. I said, good evening, everyone. All right. Uh, my name is Wilfredo Florentino. I'm the chairman of the Transportation Committee here at Community Board 5. Um, we uh, met on Monday as a committee, and we heard uh, three items. The first. Uh, being a, uh, an update on the L train shutdown. Uh, that presentation is online. We could send it to the board members electronically. I uh, selected a few screen grabs from that presentation, which I shared uh, on my report. Uh, that item does not need a vote. Um, however, the next two items do. Uh, the first being a street co-naming uh, for Mr. Clayton Rauf Hemingway Jr. Um, so just as a reminder, uh, the Transportation Committee a, a number of months back actually instituted an actual policy where Community Board 5 did not have one um, for the submission of street co-namings. Uh, and I'll mention briefly what's included in that packet. Uh, we have supporting documentation that the honoree demonstrated extraordinary and consistent commitment to the district or exhibited significant historical impact. Number two, signatures from no less than 100 residents from the surrounding streets. Uh, number three, a biography of the honoree, uh, letters of support, and lastly, a map of the proposed location. Uh, the Transportation Committee of CB5 voted unanimously to support the street co-naming application for Clayton Rauf Hemingway Jr. on Workman Avenue and Van Sicklin Avenue. Uh, may I have a motion, please? So the chair of the Transportation, Transportation Committee uh, has mentioned that they have uh, listened to the testimony, reviewed the package for co-naming um, in the district. And um, they have voted on that application in the affirmative to support the co-naming of this block of Workman and Van Sicklin. With that said, the chair has asked the board member for anyone who would like to make a motion to support. 
the committee's recommendation. It was made by Brother Sadiq. Do we have a second? It is second by Board Member Plummer. With that, I now will open it to any board members that would like to speak to uh, this question of this co-naming of this young brother who was a 16-year-old who was unfortunately gunned down in our district and his life was taken out very prematurely. His mother, his family, and the community at large has been you know, just dealing with this trauma, trying to heal with this trauma. And so if there's any board members, if there are no discussions on this motion, I would just move to vote. Mr. Chair, if I could just mention very briefly, uh, not only did we receive all of the documentation that I just mentioned, but we received uh, report cards, letters from uh, his teachers, letters from the local communities. I mean, the packet was very thorough um, with regard to this, this young man and the unfortunate incident. That's, good. I mean, that's, that's, that's very helpful. Thank you so much. So if there are any board members that have any questions or discussions on it, let's just move to vote. Okay, so all those members in favor of the motion, yes? Sure. Yes, I'm with you. <laughs> so we're just going to call a vote because there seems to be no discussion needed. All those members in favor of the motion that's on the floor to support the co-naming uh, by the Transportation Committee, all those board members say aye. Aye. Are there any board members who object? Any abstentions? So the motion has been carried for this co-naming to go forward. And the next level for community to know is that it goes before the borough board and they do a similar process, and then it goes ultimately to the city council, and then the city council person of the area and other council members also do a similar process, and they vote on it, and hopefully the mayor will not, will be in agreement with all of us and sign this into um, existence. Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair. The second uh, item that we need for a vote is another street co-naming. Uh, this one uh, is for Bishop John L. Smith, um, a very pivotal and seminal uh, religious leader um, here in East New York. Um, so the Transportation Committee of CB5 voted unanimously to support the street co-naming application for Bishop John L. Smith on Hendricks Street and Pitkin Avenue. May I have a motion, please? So the motion is from the committee. Is there anyone who would like to... Make a motion to support the committee's recommendation, board member Bright, and it's been seconded by board member Fisher. And now I'll open again for anyone who may have any questions, any comments, any discussion on the motion. Board members? Okay, that's very good. I'm one of the, you know, his biggest supporters in the, of the family and, and the church family, they're present also here in the audience. And so for Bishop Smith, this would be a great honor for us to support this co-name and application. Okay, so I'll just go to vote. All those board members in favor of the motion to support the co-name for Bishop Smith say aye. aye. Are there any objections? Any abstentions? So the motion is carried as well. And again, this is not saying that that co-naming will go into effect. It's the beginning of the process from which it carries forward with the community board's recommendation. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. So the uh, last thing is that the April Transportation Committee meeting uh, will tentatively be held Monday, April 23rd, Monday, April 23rd, from 6 to 7 p.m. at the board office, which is 404 Pine. Again, uh, Monday, April 23rd, 6 to 7 at the CB office. Transportation Committee meetings are every last Friday of the month. Uh, if you're unable to make it to a meeting, uh, the Transportation Committee email is, give y'all a second to get yourselves together, bkcb5tc at gmail. bkcb5tc at gmail. Please send your transportation concerns. Thank you. Last Monday, excuse me, did I say Friday? Sorry about that. Last uh, Monday of the month. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Any other committee that requires a vote? Parks Committee Chair Lady, Ms. Limit Davis. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. My name is Salima Davis. I'm your Parks Chair uh, for CB5. The park
Parks uh, Committee meets every second Thursday of the month and items that need to be vote, voted on. The first item is East New York Farms came in and did a presentation on some land that DOT has on Workman and Elton. And they would like to use it for a horticulture project that they do often. I don't know how if too many people know about East New York Farms and what they do. They have the farmer's market on New Lots and Skank and Hendricks area. So they obtained some land through DOT um, to do another project and plant. So therefore, they can use those produce for the farmer's market, um, along with Green Thumb. So in order for them to move forward with the project, they need a letter of support from the community, stating that we support them in the project of using the land to plant, to do their horticulture project. So with that, I make a motion. You, you oh, the committee. The committee. The committee. A report. The committee made a report and a recommendation, yes. and we voted yes to support them on that project. We did make one suggestion to East New York Farms that they request ten years to use the property, opposing to use the property for two to four years. So um, DOT told them that they can use the property for two to four years. We requested that or suggested that they ask DOT to allow them to use the property for ten years, because once a project gets started, especially when it's dealing with um, produce for the community, you know, we don't want it to stop because that's healthy eating, healthy living, and in our community, we definitely need it. So we made a suggestion that they go back to DOT and request that, uh, or suggest that DOT allows them to use the land for at least 10 years. We don't want them to pull a project once they get it started. So I would like to make a motion. You heard the chair of the Parks Committee report Right, adding the language to the letter of support as you described it relating to 10 years versus two to four years. Yes. And is any board members, is brother, uh, seconded by brother Saidi? All right, and any other board members have any discussions in that motion, board member um, Riggins? The location? the location is Work Workman and Elton. Board member Plummer? know their response. The East New York farmers, they came to us and they gave the presentation and stated that DOT would allow them to use the land for two to four years. The let's say DOT says no vet. Well that's they why we would like to, to, the, to the board. No, that's why we would like to put a stipulation in the let we'll speak just to that end that the board is in favor of it being for 10 years versus two to four years. Right. If, in fact, they, like you speak, and said if they get back and say no, then it's all bets. We, we don't support we it. We don't support it. Okay. We don't support it. That's why we put the um, requested that they ask them for 10 years opposed to two to four years because we don't want them to pull the project. And it's actually Workman and Autumn. Autumn. Okay, board member um, Dunn Holloway, board member. Yeah. Okay. All right, board member Loman. So. We need clarification on the location. Order. 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 So you're asking for a letter of support tonight. Yes. To send a letter yes. stating that with these recommendations, we'll give you the letter. In that same letter, are you stating to them? or send it to whomever, that if we don't get to 10 years, we're not gonna give the letter of support? Yes, that's why, we, that's why we're putting a stipulation in there now. 
That's, that's that what opposed about to said, two to four years that they came no. requesting for, we request as a community they give them 10 years. Because two to four years is a short period of time to do a, a horticulture project, especially if the produce are going to go to farmer's market. Can you just hold off until you hear from them before we get a letter of support? We can do that. If the, it's up to the full board. If that's what the full board recommends, we put the stipulation in there so that the stipulation states in the letter of support if it's not 10 years, then we don't support them. So Chairman, I'm going to table. Yeah. Okay, but I want you to first have to, you have to vote on the motion that's on the floor now, right? Because it was seconded. And then we can, the motion. Is that right? Yes. Do the motion to table? Hold on. Please, board member Bright. Because once that contract is done, they don't have to honor it anymore. And that's what happened with the HPD gardens. They allowed people to go out and give them contracts. But once the contracts were over with and they wanted the land back, they didn't, they didn't renew those contracts. So that's why we want to put the stipulation in there because two to four years is a short period of time. You know, and once they get started, you know, it benefits the community. So we don't want them to start two to four years identifying excuse me, this area and people are coming and then the city say, woo, it's gonna make a good housing project, okay. get out. We don't so, want to renew that, you know, so we would like for them to have a longer period of time to move forward with this project so, and green them. So with that saying, Madam Chair, then it speaks to what the, I'm sensing what the board membership is saying with the motion to table, we right? Table. Because I heard a committee also saying we, 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 we favor East New York Farms projects and so forth. What we don't want to see happen is that projects begin, but they are unable to continue. So I, that's what I'm hearing, correct? Yes, yes. So there was an ask of the East New York Farms organization and Green Thumb to ask DOT for some sort of response to a 10-year ask. Yes. And so... I think that that's why you're noticing that there is a synergy amongst the board membership yes, about that. So let me just get a couple of others and then we're going to move we on because we, we have time sensitive. So board member Feliciano. No, but she said yes. there was a motion made but to table. But her motion was to have it approved. Yes. She has to kill her motion in order for that motion. You can't have right. a motion yeah. that's been approved. Right. This, well, this is what we're saying. So what I want to move to do is this. So that we can move forward with that. And I've heard the chair even say that she agrees that we should table this. And let's move on. And let's get more feedback from DOT. Okay? So that way we can move on with the other things. We don't need to discuss it any further and complicate it any further. The motion to table it is apparently clear. Let's move it to table, okay? And then we will reconvene possibly when they get back to you within the next 30 days. Okay? I'm not having no more discussion on what we're talking about. Oh, 
Yeah. Okay. That, I mean, so, if you need any more clarification, you all listen, Mr. Riggins, board member Riggins, respectfully, you can, you can talk to her. She, she got pictures and everything. Okay? Do you have anything else, Madam Chair, that you said you wanted to do? The Highland Park Reservoir has been, um, it's for the Highland Park Reservoir. It is a preserved land now. Thanks to NYC H2O, they, in working with the assembly, working with the state, they have that land, it's preserved land, they cannot build on that land. And we worked on that project last year, the year before last, and it came to fruitation. Also, the Brooklyn Borough President's Office wrote a letter in support of that, and that letter with the governor and everything went through to preserve that land there. Um, H2O would like to continue working with the reservoir. They also had DOT, thanks to our DOT chair, install a light there where now you can cross, which uh, you couldn't do before and take students to. A little bit of light motion, everybody. Let's not make too much motion and other discussions, please, we're doing board business, please. Take students to uh, the reservoir for a trip. So they would like to remain the conduit for the Highland Park Reservoir. The committee voted that we agree that they should because they've done the work and they continue to do the work. They would like to beautify up there and make it a place for a community and for tours, more tours for students. So we voted that we agree that they should remain the conduit for, with the Parks Department for the Highland Park Reservoir. Okay, so that's the committee's report and there was a motion. If there's one that board member Ramos will make the motion to support the committee's recommendation, is there a second by board member uh, Ms. Jarrett? Any discussion around H2O's recommendation to remain the conduit for the reservoir at Highland Park? Okay, so we can move on to vote. All those members in favor say aye. Are there any objections? Any abstentions? So the eyes have it. And Ms. Mother Plummer. A one abstention. Mother Plummer is abstaining. Okay? So we have one abstention. Okay? But the eyes have it, so the motion is carried to support uh, H2O. Yes, and April the 11th will be our next Parks Committee meeting at 6.30 at 404 Pine Street. You can call the Community Board office if you need any information about the Parks Committee, but I will be there and my co-chair, Ms. Kayleigh Madunge, as well. Thank you. Thank blessing. you so much. Any other committee <laughs> report? Committee report. Any other committee met over the last 30 days met? No, this is not just a report. It's trying to give us a report. Uh, so, Landers, committee chair, by your point. Okay? Followed by the Social Services and Health Committee and the Public Safety Committee, third. This report, um, most of it is in your folder. But what I do want to bring to your attention was the presentation that was made to our committee by the two organizations that's named. And that, that their presentation was on the question of Airbnb as illegal hotels in the city. What they pointed out was that presently, the most saturated area for the B&Bs is Bed-Stuy. They said up next is East New York. So what we've done, what I've included in your packet, are those two, uh, one is a motion that they are putting forward against the expansion of the BNBs. The other is an explanation of what they are and what we should be aware of. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring to your attention is that our committee talked about a project perhaps for the youth. It was discussed that we should approach the 
uh, fast food restaurants in the main, but other very large businesses generally for a scholarship for young people. And that, that, that scholarship would enable them to set a uh, business, so to speak, that would be a business that would employ them to do the snow removal for seniors, the gardening for seniors, et cetera. So that it's a proposal we want you to think about and um, get back to us and back to the um, community board, to, to Ms. Perkins, to let us know. But most important in your folder is the discussion around Airbnb. And that, in fact, that is another tack toward gentrification. Thank you, thank you. I, I call the order, so um, Social Service and Health Committee Board Chair. What's that, sir? She, we have a comment by Dr. Um, Kabir. Was she spoken? Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chair, for giving me the chance to speak. Um, uh, Madam Chair, um, I know you mentioned that you want to target fast food restaurant for the scholarship. I think uh, it, it's a great idea, but I will also ask you that fast food restaurants should not be singled out. And the reason I'm talking about, I work in the industry for the last 20, 28 years. It's a great industry. I work for White Castle. You know, we are always in the community doing things. So I will just respectfully ask that fast food industry should not be singled out. We should be targeting all the businesses in our community. Thank you for that. Management. If we don't, we'll never get the public to come back to another CB5 meeting. Okay? Hey, the, um, that was one option. Another option that we discussed for the youth, because you know, the, there's two factors in the community. We have the youth and we have the elderly. And we also discussed that fact that there could be a government program that provide the funding for have that, you know, to have the youth, a youth program that would, there would be funding money that we would pay the youth and they would provide the service for the elderly. And snow removal, and that's very critical for the, the elderly in our neighborhoods. So we felt that that was very important, that something we could address the elected officials to come up with some sort of program, and then we will cater to both the youth and the elderly. So that's what you know we could do. Um, and of course, the youth committee is more than willing to support you in any way. So of course, we'll send members who have that conversation. Of course, we can build on that uh, discussion and consider some of the feedback mentioned and make it even better initiative, make it more effective. So now we turn over to um, Madam Chair of our Social Service and the Health Committee, uh, Paulette Pin. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I'm very glad my co-chair is here. We were able to have a, 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 a meeting. 
Uh, we still are in need, uh, chair, Mr. Chairperson, of some viable committee members. Uh, but we held a, heard an excellent presentation uh, by the Diabetes Initiative, and they're scheduled to come in April to do a full uh, presentation. Uh, and, and they really highlighted the high rate of diabetes in our community and some programmatic and policy as well as individual ways that we can impact on it. So we very much want to support their presentation to the full board because they have information that's very necessary in our lives. So that is the issues that we met. Thank you so much. We have a question to the social service, Ms. P. Colette? Colette, there's a question from board member Rosado. that is going around, um, not in our committee per se, but is this whole healthy eating, um, increasing the amount of food grown in our local gardens as one of the ways to make it more accessible to people. There was a presentation around prescriptions by doctors to their patients saying, you take this now to a, so that's one of the proposals and I will bring more information on that. But, but absolutely, because that you gotta deal with it at the source. Nutrition is here. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Awesome. We, that, yes. The, two, the presentation is two nurses who are certified diabetes instructors. So that, that presentation will deal with that. But on the point around the healthy food, and as our committee take it up, as well as increased activity, we will be bringing that. Now that I have somebody else in the committee. Thank you so much. Okay, so we have public safety. Chairperson, Brother Paul Muhammad. Peace and blessings, Assalamualaikum. I want to just really, really, I'm very happy to be a part of this board. You know, I'm looking at the people who care about their community, willing to spend the time out here. Could you give yourself a round of applause, please? And another thing, I, I, I really champion those who are a little bit more seasoned. I'm not going to say older. Ms. Bright, Ms. Plummer, I got these platinum Panthers in here, so I'm, I'm really very excited behind it because they feed the energy. I want to let you know on March 17th at 292, we had our first public safety, making our community a decent and safe place to live. Let me tell you, everything we've heard here tonight is about that, making our community a decent, safe place to live. One, you know, we we were challenged with timing and organization as we usually are as people. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know, you used to call it CP time and so forth, and on, but we're coming out of that. I got to say it because we're, we're, we're family here. But we're, we're learning that the fact that we're learning how to build, and we're being forced to do that because we're a challenge to stay in our own communities. The fight is on. We are at war to remain here. We're not communities, we're colonies. Somebody outside of us is controlling us, and it's time for us to fight for it. So at that town hall meeting, we had folks that were from, we had Brother Sadiq, he came from the Youth Committee. We had Sister Bentley, she's on the public safety, but she came to speak about HIV and issues that are affecting our community. We're, see, we're, the, the attack, our health, the things that are affecting our children, and we have to really have a dialogue among ourselves. 
We have folks came from Isabella Farms, urban farming and garden. And I'm going to tell you, the youth are still talking about that. She pulled a whole team of young people out of a martial arts class, about 30, 40 of them. And I'm hearing right now we're getting questions about how to be a farmer. A, a tomato doesn't come out of a can, they learned that day. And they, they're asking questions, how do we do it? See, that's where it starts. We have to change the bad habits we have. You can't bring something, like you can't put something in front of somebody if they don't know what to do with it. But if you start teaching the youth early, then they'll start embracing the concept. So that's on us. So what we talk about what we want, we can't ask somebody to do for us what we can do for ourselves. These habits must have changed. And we had presentation on how to cook healthy food. You know, and we had presentation on what is healthy food. So I'm telling you, I'm looking for this to grow. We want to embrace, as public safety chair, I just don't look at the police and the fire. I look at it, our safety depends on the fact of how we see ourselves. We're going to deal with the police. We're going to deal with, but we got to understand that we're killing ourselves. And I'm going to finish with this. You know, you know, but there's so much to say about that. We, we got to stop speaking for other people's narrative. Gunshots are not killing our youth more than suicide, STI, and opiates. So all you hear about is gunshot, but our children are killing themselves from hopelessness. We have to rebuild the community. Brother Minister Henry Muhammad gave a presentation to the, to the leaders there. We have to change ourselves and take control of our community, and thank you so much. That's my... Um, Chairperson Muhammad, you did a fantastic job at hosting that event and putting it together, so we commend you for doing just that. So, we're going to move now to the DM, to the district manager's report. So, Good evening, everyone. Uh, just to the general board membership, there was a letter of comment. Our response to the preliminary budget was put in each of your folders. Note that the, co the numbers are corresponding to the register that I provided to everybody last month. So these are the responses to those register items. So look through them, see the responses, and comment back to me with anything you want to talk about, anything that you want to get to any particular agency, um, to OMB, and definitely to the mayor's office. We're going into our borough consultations very soon, so all of this is going to tie in. I cannot stress it enough. We have to speak on those matters that require budgetary focus. Um, I hear a lot of things that are happening throughout the community from members as well as uh, our community members. So we have to contact the district office and talk about those things where we want to put money to the problem as opposed to just, you know, discussing how we can get it solved quickly. We want it long term, something that can be resolved long term in this community. And that requires money. Uh, we're partnering with Board 16 and HPD for a tenant fair, a tenant housing fair in April. <coughs> Uh, we have flyers in the back on that, and we'll be following up this spring for a homeowner's fair with HPD. This is something where Board 5 and Board 16 are working together because Brownsville and East New York mirror each other as it relates to issues around housing, school, transportation, so forth and so on. Um, I'll leave on that because I know we do have a lot to get through for the rest of the meeting, but if you have any questions, you know my report is in your folders. If any community members would like to discuss anything, I'm here till the end of the meeting, of course. And you can contact our office at 929-221-8261. 929-221-8261. you. So while we clapping, can we clap for the district manager and her team? All of them that has been working behind the scenes. Day to day, uh, Brother Kamar and Shamika, and of course, Jahira, thank you so much. We really appreciate you for your hard work. You're doing a fine job. So the, the, the chairperson's report is also in your folders. Um, you should look at it. You should read it. It's brief, but it's simple. It is springtime. Hello. Happy spring, everybody. So we want to make sure that we keep that in mind. Um, as I've mentioned, some of you may have attended this special meeting that I convened as a result of the oversight. And we had to conclude the nominations for this year in time. 
um, in case someone wanted for this month meeting to run, and we did not have anybody that wanted to make any nominations against the nominations committee's recommendation. So that was really good. So with that, we should thank and welcome two new executive board members who's sitting up here. You see them? Sister Jessica Bailey, our new recording secretary. Brother Angus Fisher, our new correspondence secretary. Welcome. Don't we look good? We look good, y'all. And we should. With that said, I just want to congratulate all of us, all of you executive board members from first to second to all of you treasurers and parliamentarians uh, for being restored as an executive board. That's a good sign of solidarity. Thank you board members for your vote of confidence and all of that for, for helping us do that. Um, I do want to also speak on like what I've heard um, Madam Chair from Social Service and Health Committee talked about the need for new members and the fact that because we still have lack of members that are active and doing their job, it's difficult for committees to move forward. So the BP's office rep is always here, Anthony Drummond, and he, he will hear us and go back. He met, he said, with the BP's uh, senior advisor today on that issue of new board members. We need new board members and fresh legs and fresh minds and people who are committed to want to serve on behalf of CB5 so that we can have them assigned to committees like social services and health and other committees that can move a lot of the agenda forward. And so we are doing that. Every You, you heard us last month, um, and so stand by. But with that said, um, I just wanted just to say, you know, thank you. I think that we are you. We're moving forward united. And that's what we're supposed to do. So we want to move on with that. With that, I want to go to anything in old business. Yes, Albert Scott. Thank you. Um, a, while, a while back, we had brought up uh, a topic which was a reference to Vital Brooklyn, which is more or less a, he a health-centered initiative and looking to address it by um, identifying social determinants. Um, this is funded by the New York State Governor, 1.3 billion. Um, the main thing I just would like for the board members to know, as well as the district office to know, eventually, um, according to Assemblywoman Diana Richardson, they're gonna start releasing some RFPs pertaining to this specific initiative. Um, for example, one initiative, which will be released in June, approximately is Vital Brooklyn Green Job Training Grant Fact Sheet. Fact sheet, and I'm just asking for the district office if they can create some form of a synopsis, a small summary of A, what Vital Brooklyn is, um, so what are the requisites to even apply for these grants, because before you even thinking about pr presenting a proposal, you have to be registered with, the, uh, with something the governor created known as Grants Gateway, in which you have to register with this site to even be, before be considered, and my concern is, that our community-based organizations in East New York is not, um, is not A, not aware or not prepared to take on some of these initiatives. And these social determinants are um, gun, um, gun violence prevention initiatives, health, job placement, and then another component is the housing piece. Um, this specific initiative is uh, Central Brooklyn, which encompass, accomplish, uh, but basically consists of nine assembly districts. So if, she, if the district office can do some research so that information can be disseminated to the board as well to the community so folks can start getting prepared for these particular grants opportunities. Thank you. Brooklyn, and <clears throat> actually we are on it. The district office as well as community board <clears throat> have been working in conjunction with our state assembly representatives uh, Charles Barron's office, uh, Latrice Walker, uh, and talk of the, as far as the vital Brooklyn monies that they have made us aware of. And we are very much aware, as you mentioned, of the RFPs that have been put out. There's been some orgs, if you remember executive committee, that some nonprofits have come before us and talked about they've been funding already, received funding from that vital Brooklyn pot. And so um, you're right about the fact that the organizations that will become eligible have to be inside that system. And so we are talking to the nonprofit organizations in the community, making sure that they are prepared so that they can be able to submit for those other outstanding proposals. 
and receive some of that vital Brooklyn funding. We um, will be in touch with our, you know, our state assembly members are already in touch with us and they are keeping us informed as to that process. Well, I agree with you and I thank you for bringing that to our attention because it is uh, a very huge initiative that's coming from the state assembly. Um, anything else out of or new business? I'm gonna go to old business. I'm sorry, new business. I apologize, I wanna go to new business. All right, we're gonna close up. Oh, M G. Let me hear new. Go. All Never right. Mind. The new the new business is in reference to the uh, rezone area. Um, basically, since the rezone has passed, um, two things has occurred, um, which requires definitely the support of community board five members and definitely for the district office to follow up on. There was more or less uh, majority. You may know that there was a ticket blitz along the Fulton Street corridor in which uh, some of these uh, businesses had to incur some fines or whatever. The businesses there have organized a merchant association along those lines, and um, they actually had a meeting this evening, so that's why some of them are not present here. But um, at the district cabinet meetings, if you could please be on top as far as has the ticketing stopped, or you know what are some of the new issues and concerns. And the other part in the um, rezone area is on Lind Liberty and Ashford. I'm asking it definitely the community board, use your social capital, whatever, and definitely the district office just to follow up on, on that property on Liberty and Ashford. They're looking to tear it down, what is proposed. The concern that we have is um, there's two portions. You can either opt into the MIH or opt out. What is the process? If you opt out, how much do the developer have to pay and then how are the resources reinvested back into CB5? Just those two entities, thank you. Ms. Duty noted you would like to respond, Madam District Manager. Yes, just very quickly, um, the representative from Congresswoman Nydia Velasquez's office, who the here just spoke, uh, is convening a meeting in regards to those business owners and that wanting lines that were blissed across Atlantic Avenue. And I know Council Member Espinal had had some um, outdoor response to that as well, but Nydia Velasquez's office will be meeting, I believe it's next week, on that matter, with EDC, SBS, and another agency that they'll be pulling in for that. We can probably get that to the treasurer. All right, and new business, I, uh, Mr. Roy Moss, of course, and new business, go right ahead, sir. Uh, the block parties are gonna be coming soon. Yes. And it's very important to people to know that they cannot block the streets with cars because in an emergency, in an emergency, the, the, uh, the police or the ambulance cannot come through. So it's very important for them not to block. I've seen it before, and it's very dangerous because you have to have the, the, the tape only, not the cars block, because by the time they get the cars moved, it's too late. So. For folks, all of us who apply for block party permits, and what the board members mentioning is that normally we see sometimes people try to cut the street off with their cars, and that becomes even more of a safety hazard. In fact, if there is an emergency, so you should not use your cars to cut off the streets. Try to find and see if you can get some tape or something or sort. It's very inexpensive, and it's a better use versus using your own cars and possibly getting your cars damaged in the case of an emergency. Thank you, board member Ramos. Um, I have an issue I want to like to bring, not an issue, but I would like to bring something into new business. As I did last month, if you notice, I put a motion, I made a motion last month to remove certain board members because of chronic and excessive, excessive absences in general member meetings and in uh, committee. And, and this is to the point of what we heard echoed on a regular basis. There are still some members who refuse to hear our voices, I am making a motion to remove board member John Whitehead because of excessive absences and being inexcusable as it relates to his appointment as a board member. And I have taken a look at not just this year. Remember, I said this last year. I mean, I said this last month. I've been looking at the course of two years I'm looking at two terms, present and last year's present uh, term, and I'm seeing a consistency in certain board members, and I'm here now to say that they need to be removed. Is there anyone who would like to second that motion? Second by board member Lohman. I'm sorry? 
Make the motion. Make the motion. You making the motion? I make a motion that we accept Chairman Mitchell's recommendation to remove um, John White. And it's been seconded by Jessica Bailey. I'm opening it up for any board member who would like to have any conversation in reference to this motion. You know, discussion, board member Riggins. We don't have to do it. As you suggest, and the office has been continually notifying every board member as we have doing for years. For whatever reason, there's no excusables, there's no, just, just no shows. And so with that said, I got it, you know, so. Very much, very important, very true. And I agree that we've been making a tremendous amount of outreach to no avail with this particular board member. Okay, if there are no more discussions on that motion, I now will call the vote. All those members in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Are there any objections? Are there any abstentions to the motion? One abstention, board member Riggins, one abstention, the ayes have it and the motion is carried to remove gentleman John Whitehead from off our board list going forward. So I appreciate you all for your vote of confidence. And we're just saying that just by us as a board, we're sending a message borough-wide and citywide that we are not tolerating politics as usual, okay? No longer should you have your name on the list just because, just because. We want to move our board that our matters forward and we want people that want to serve. There's too many people who volunteer on committees. There's too many people who come to meetings like you all. We're here, it's almost nine o'clock at night. And I'm not trying to take nothing from nobody, but a lot of y'all ain't as busy as I am. Okay, but yet I make it here every single month and I make it sure that I move around and see committees and make sure other businesses are being conducted. This is a voluntary position for us all. Okay, so when you want to be a board member, you have to live up to that commitment and do your due diligence. Board member Jared. Are there any other board members to be removed? There is a strong possibility, yes. As I constantly pay attention month by month, I'm looking. And by the time we're waiting right now, because the, the borough um, office now's job is, is to submit a new list of people who have applied and would like to be on the board and they can do so when there's certain people in the way. And so that's what they say was their problem the last year, when I've asked them to remove certain members and I looked up and they had the same member's name on the list. And I'm like, you, 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 come on, why is this person still named if they're not gonna serve? Well, they said, well, you were chair, you got a board, won't you use your charter and your bylaws? And so we did. And there is still some who will be removed if you don't serve the way that you have admitted that you were served when you were first appointed. It's just that simple. No pun intended, I get it, but we're moving this board forward. Thank you. So, outside of all of that, that's if there's no more new business, I will now, and before I do so, I wanna thank you community so much. Let's clap it up for them, for those of you that stuck around. From the youngest of you, to the eldest of you that stood around, I appreciate spending this time. This is well worth it for us. We really appreciate, again, Camba. We appreciate the Penn Workman community. We appreciate East New York at large. We appreciate UWNET and others in the district cab office and all of that, and all of you for doing this, but I now will entertain a motion to adjourn. Made by Bob Manfredino, is second by. Second by Mr. Riggins, all those members say favor, say aye. aye. All the objections, all right, the ayes have it. Have a good night. Thank you so much. God bless you. We'll see you next month.